Hey everybody, it's Eric from the Mature Minded Gamers. We are back for another Star Trek Picard analyzed and reviewed episode. We're covering episode 9 of Et in Arcadia, Ego Part 1. Guys, this episode, last week we said it should have been called Answers. This week it should be called Setup and Premonition, I think. We get lots of things laid out, lots of things that could mean a ton coming up could be nothing. We're going to cover all of them. So let's break down this episode section by section. Uh, we're going to start out with uh, introducing my normal bridge crew, Brad and Will. What up? Energize. All right, guys. So we've all watched this episode. Let's start at the very, very beginning where Picard and crew arrive at Capulus, right? Isn't that the name of it? Let's go with Caprica. Caprica? So Battlestar Galactic again? So we start out with Picard and crew arriving at Calpulus, the planet that they've been see- seeking for, what, a couple episodes now. They, they exit through the trans warp gate, soon followed by Narek, who comes in hot, unloading fire on them. He pulls the, uh, the old Romulan fake out with the, the cloaking maneuver. We've seen that a couple times in the past. I, I feel like we've seen it at least once, maybe twice. But uh, anyway, so we, we, he pulls that. Uh, he does a little thing where it makes him look like he's almost dead. And we get the first scene that I, I think is a, a big part of what's going to come is Soji saying, well, good, you know, let him die. And Picard's like, no, we, you, you know, you don't kill someone. And she's like, well, he attacked us. Well, you don't kill an, an, an injured enemy. And so kind of, kind of laying what I think is going to be the groundwork for what's going to happen at the end of this season one. But anyways, we'll get more into that. So we get that scene. Obviously, he's faking it. He starts shooting on the ship. We see a a pretty good fight between him um, and them fighting back and forth. And then all of a sudden, when it looks like he's starting to get bad. That's unexpected. Boom. Here comes the Borg Cube. Holy crap. Was that not awesome? Yeah, that was pretty awesome seeing that drop out of a transwarp conduit. 100%, man. I remember when I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, really? I'll be honest, what upset me the most, though, is it didn't do anything. Like, it didn't even fire on on Narek's ship to, like, disable it or anything, because immediately right after it comes in, we get the Orchids, which are a little weird to me. Um, I I, I get get where they're coming from with it, but I would have rather seen just, like, drones or something. But anyway, so we get these Orchids come, and they basically swallow the ships or wrap themselves around the ships while... It takes three or four of them on the board cube, and it, you know, it just kind of touches the edges. But apparently it's enough to power them down, and all the ships go to the planet's surface. Uh, we don't see a lot about that, really, because Picard has his first uh, mental, or I guess not mental, his first brain injury, or whatever you want to call it. Because when they're going down, Picard is out of it, and he says a couple words. He says, thank you all for coming, everyone. Do you guys think that means anything here in the big picture? Was that just some random words they had him say? I took that. See, I wondered the same thing, too. And so I started to think of like what that could have actually meant. But I think in the end, I just sort of settled on that. it. He, he was legitimately asking everybody for being there uh, to help him along with this. But, but I honestly don't know. You think it could have just been him thinking he was dying? And he just wanted them to know how much they meant to him, and he appreciates them coming with him. I mean, I think it's pretty simple. Well, he has a couple flashbacks in his, his that we see him when he's passed out or whatever, when he's in the medical bed, or whatever happened to him. It looks like he's back on the vineyard, and we see like some random flashes of him talking to the doctor, asking him, you know, do you really want to go back out there in the cold? And, uh, different things like that. I, I don't really know if it, if it's going to mean anything later on. If it was just kind of him kind of putting everything together, maybe. So uh, I wasn't really sure either. I thought I'd ask you guys. I didn't pull anything major from it to make me think that it was going to be super important, but uh, who knows? It may go somewhere. It may not. Well, what would you guys think about the flowers, the, the orchids attacking the ships? Does that feel weird to you guys, or was that that seem okay? Man, it seemed like just a plot device to be able to get the ships down on the planet to me. I mean, I understand the premise. They disabled ships, and it was more of a disable tactic. But why disable it if they're, you know, trying to isolate themselves and not make where other people can find them? Why even have something where it can disable? I think it was just kind of like, really? I mean, it took down a board cube. I mean, that's just that's crazy. I mean, 
and it was just a very simple oh this is going to touch it zap out the engines you're going to fall you're going to crash and that's it assume that they were they were synthetic in some form you know synthetic carbon based hybrid like you know there was some real life in it there was some some of the synthetic into it as well i think they were definitely bred for what they were doing to to suck down energy um and so I, I didn't really think too much beyond that. It was, you know, they said they only had 15 of them, so it wasn't even as though they were, they had them in mass quantities. Uh, the idea that it took out a Borg cube, I sort of, in my mind, uh, uh, let that go because it's a Borg cube isn't operating at peak efficiency because it's really only manned by some XBs and and uh, uh, it's it's been crippled for so long. Anyway, it, it, it's probably not operating 100%. So um, if it had a full con- complement of, of board drones and wasn't already you know it's, um, leaking energy to, to to force fields and whatnot to keep it whole i think it probably would have taken a little bit more than a couple of those that were down yeah that's a good point did you notice in the front of it it looked like it had a spot for one of the board spears oh yeah i saw that yeah i thought that was kind of cool nice little touch okay so after picard's episode he wakes up uh dr and they're they're landed on the planet at this point. We don't really see any, how any of that goes down. Uh, Doctor Agnes is talking to him, and she pulls out an old school tricorder. Very looked very uh, the next generation ish to me, uh, and it had some uh, derma gel or whatever that stuff was called. I can't. I, I didn't write the name down. Some of the old school derma gel. I think is what it was. Uh, I thought that was kind of a cool touch. And again, going back to where we thought maybe someone from the next generation wharf was riding with Rios, you know, maybe brought that stuff on board. Do you guys think that meant anything, or was it just something Rios had on board? I think it's something he brought on board from his time on the, the, the older ship. I think he's probably just got it. Well, I thought that Picard said it was his tricorder and stuff. I thought Picard brought that with him as far as, like, his, his own uh, part of his luggage or whatever. Because didn't he say to, to Dr. Agnes, so oh, that's mine? No, I missed that if he did. I missed that too. If he didn't, that would make that that maybe I'm crazy, but yeah, if you're right, that would make a little you know that makes sense. So, all right. So after that, you know, Doctor Agnes obviously knows that he has his brain disease, and so we get a scene of him telling the whole crew about it. Uh, Raffi seems affected by it more than all the rest of them. All of them are obviously seem very shook by it, but Raffi seems to be the worst. After that scene, we get them all exiting the ship. And they see the smoke coming up from the uh, cube. And again, Soji is kind of reluctant. She's like, okay, good. Let them all die. And then we get uh, Picard and Rios and all them saying, well, no, we have people on that cube, you know? And so they end up deciding to go together as a group instead of splitting up um, to investigate the cube. And it's pretty cool. I wasn't super happy with the destruction of the cube and how it kind of was like they just found a real easy opening to walk into. I mean, I, I get production-wise why they did it that way, but it seemed a little cheesy. I would have rather had like everybody outside the cube and then meet outside. You know, the fact that they were able to get in and then find these people on that giant cube right in the right spot seemed a little pokey to me. But anyway, so they they find Seven and the XBs, and uh, they have a nice sweet reunion. We get one of the XBs, you know, saying "Look, Cutus," uh, and Picard doesn't respond. I almost wish he would. I mean, I, it's almost like an old friend. I mean, I know it's something of his past he hates, but like that means something to that guy, that XB. And so, I don't know. I, I don't. I, I wish he'd be like you know, high feller survivor or something. But he just kind of blows him off every time. But anyways, we get a, a great scene with him and Seven reuniting and Elnor. What what do you guys think of this? All this stuff that went down here. What do you think about the cube and the, everything going on? I think that. I mean, I liked it. I I didn't think it was too hokey that they just kind of walked on board. Um, at least not like, not like it was that I was missing anything. Like there was uh, a door a, right there though. They just walked right through. There's well, a, it, we, we really don't know how much they walked around know. it. I mean, it, I don't know. It's hard telling. I, I didn't, I didn't excuse it. I guess I didn't think about it too much, but what I did think is that that's a big dang ship. Like for them to have just come in contact with people right away. Uh, at the the opening that they did find, that was a little um, surprising. But I guess you know, for the sake of time, I guess they really did have to kind of cut this down. But uh, just it, it seemed all 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 matter of factly and pretty convenient that that all the 
XBs that we've already seen and seven of nine and, and Elnor just happened to be right there at that, that particular way. Another reason why I think this is all in Picard's head. Crazy theories. And this is the second point I think where it makes me think that Picard is definitely done after this season is when he, he talks to seven and Elnor Picard has this conversation with Elnor, tells him that he's proud of him. Elnor looks like he's almost ready to cry, and he wants to stay with Picard, but Picard tells him to stay with Seven um, because the XBs and them need him. And then we get... Keep saving the galaxy, Picard. That's all on you now. Seven telling him... Keep saving the galaxy, Picard. And then Picard replies back with this, which I think is a big deal. He says, that's all on you now. And so I think, I, I really think that we, I mean, I know this sounds absurd, but I think we may get 709 and Borg Cube saving as our Picard ship from now on. What do you guys think? Is that too out there in left field? Uh, I don't think the show is going to continue without, without Patrick Stewart. We're going to get more into that later, though. I think it, is kind of well let me let me give you a new wild random theory here so think back to the to the middle of the episode when dr sung introduces gerardi to the quote-unquote golem and how he calls himself the 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 i can't remember what he, the body person and that that uh bruce maddox was the framework person so uh he has Gerardi take a look at the system to do a mental overlay or a mind overlay. And with the assumption that it's going to be Dr. Soon, that's going to take this. Now, let me just throw this out there that we're, we're in the realm of possibility that that is the body that Picard is going to go into without the mental issues. I get what you guys are saying, but I think Agnes is in such uh, distress and agony right now. I think she's going to find a way to put Maddox in that robot, in that golem. No, before you got on, Brad, I said the exact same thing to Will. I, I think you guys are both wrong. I think that uh, that fix it thing that uh, we're getting too, we're getting too, yeah, we're getting too far ahead though. Let's go back to the scene we're talking about. It's a good point. So we get them leaving. Anyways, I, I definitely feel like Seven and Eleanor are going to be a big part of season two, whether they get the board cube up and running and that's our ship, or maybe they can't get the cube running and they join uh, the other ship. One or the other, I think they're definitely sticking around in my opinion. Just, right. just from but that conversation. I think the comment had to do more with that seven of nine and Elnor are going to come in and save the day at the end of whatever chaos is about to ensue with everything. And the reason I think that is because the Borg aren't necessarily synthetic, but they have still synthetic attributes. And I think that's going to come into play with this god that's coming down or whatever that's going to be summoned, the Destroyer. And I think they're going to show that, hey, they're the best of both worlds or they're they're, they're equal kind of thing. And I think that's going to come into play. And I think she's going to be the savior or whatever defending saving the galaxy or whatever from what the Romulans and the gods are wanting to do and going to destroy everything. So I questioned a couple things when seven tells Picard that she's seen it all when she was hooked up. So when she was hooked up to the hive, she knew how to come to the trans warp conduit and come to them. She knew where she needed to be. So how, how did, how did she know that? Where, where's that information coming from? Chroniton that- particles and temporal mechanics. No, it was in the the computer that the Tal uh, was it Tal Shiar, not the Tal Shiar. I think you meant Zavash. The Zavash. I think it's that the ship that the Zavash assimilated. I, I think that because when the ant was assimilated, all of her memories are in there, and she's already seen the vision. Well, when when Seven of Nine was the Borg Queen, she saw that vision. She already knows that information. That's why she knows where to go. That she's, you know, the she's already has the same scene, and obviously we know that 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 uh, vision was meant for synths and wasn't meant for for organics. Yeah, that, so that's, that's actually, why she's already seen that. That's actually a pretty good 
assessment. I hadn't thought about that. So why? Yeah, I think there's more there, but I think I think we'll get to it. So next up, we get them arriving at the city, and we meet. You just see all kinds of uh, artificial life there. All of them are twins, and the first one we meet is Rakana, and she basically greets them and says, "Oh, you've completed your mission." When she sees Soji, you know we're so glad you're back. And Soji says, "Yes." What do you think her mission was? Did I miss that? You know, I thought they had the same question because I was like, okay, what mission was that? Any idea on that one, Brad? I, I'm, I'm stuttering a step in here because part of me wants to say that the mission was to bring uh, Picard to that planet, but because of Data's memories. But the other part of the mission could have been just data collection and get it, getting to the point that... Getting the Borg cube to their planet or getting that the message from the 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 from the Zatvash there but I she didn't have any active role in that yeah I don't I I don't know All right, I, I, I still think she very more. she's a lot like a um like a um, like a sleeper Cylon. agent like yeah like a sleeper agent like a Cylon from Battlestar Galactica it's totally my 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 feel for her now okay uh, she also walks up to Picard and goes over his his facial wrinkles and has a really cool scene where she says, you know, I can see all the the strain this has put on you and your wisdom and everything. I thought that was kind of cool how they did that. I think that's going to play into this later on, too. We'll talk about that in a little bit, too, as well. But um, And then next up, here comes Brent Spiner, a.k.a. Alton Soon. The long lost son that we didn't know existed. Data's real half brother or or full brother. I, I don't know, whatever you want to call him. It, it was really nice seeing this. We seen Soon's old, old ancestors back in uh, Enterprise. That was kind of like an, an evil Soon. And uh, so this is, uh, this is kind of cool, you know, uh, just to see him playing that role again. Uh, some we did we didn't know about. So we we had speculated that Doctor Soon was alive. You know, or I know I had. I thought maybe he was there, but you know, this is kind of the next best thing. It kind of makes sense. I see where they were going with it, um, and I think he played the role very well. Um, and then we also meet uh, Sutra, who is Jana's sister, that uh, looks like an early version of Soji and Dodge. Did you guys notice that? There's like early versions of some of these, and then yeah, it, it did look like there were early, like the very first handful of revisions that that were made all had golden eyes, like like uh, Data did, and you know the 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 like reflective skin and whatnot. So I think they, like you said, they're just early revisions, right? You wonder Super- why she was wearing all that makeup, though. Uh, I think it was to get the golden reflection mostly. To make her look like a, you know an android, I, I don't know. Um, she seemed to kind of be the leader, though. Did you guys notice that? I don't know why that is, but she did seem to be like uh, the leader. I wonder if she was one of the first. We we get uh, Alton soon explaining how Sutra has learned to do the Vulcan mind meld, and so she wants to do it on Doctor Agnes to see this, or not premonition. What's it called? See this uh, the thing that. I can't pull the I can't pull the thought out. I don't know what it is. So she she wants to do the Vulcan mind meld to see uh, the vision that uh, Commander O shared with Doctor Agnes, and so they do. And we find out that this is not an early warning for humans to stay away from android or uh, synthetic life. It is actually a warning for them that there is an overlord synthetic beings watching at all times. And if you need help to call us and we will come and save you and help you evolve and wipe out all the humans, which seems like a nice twist. I didn't see that coming. What'd you guys think about that? It seems like a, like a creature or whatever we'd see in the next generation that was omnipotent and all um, omnipresent. And it would just seem like a, a regular episode nemesis in, in one of the episodes of Next Generation, to be honest yeah. with you. It's like a synth version of the Q. Hmm. The Q, you, you think maybe it is the Q? 
wonder if the Q will come and save the day. How cool would that be? Uh, I doubt that's going to happen. I don't think John Delancey's talked about being on this show at all, but um, I don't really think that's the case. That was more just kind of a joke than anything else. I mean, it, they did kind of seem pretty omnipotent. And if they've always kind of just been watching, then that that's, doesn't make any sense. Like if they know that so they really think that humanity or organics are the true source of all evil, why didn't they just come wipe us out? Like, it doesn't make sense that they're waiting for the sense of our time to go and, you know, beckon for them before they come and wipe us all out. Like, that just, if that's the case, I'm going to be upset. It does seem like we're not getting the whole story there, doesn't it? Almost like Commander O put this in her, in Girardi, or in Dr. Agnes's brain. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It, it does seem a little weird, but. Uh, so next up, we get uh, Alton giving a really good guilt trip to Dr. Agnes about her killing Maddox. And we finally see what, uh, what I think is going to be Picard's next body. We finally see the golem and Alton says that, you know, he needs her help to get it completed. He wants to use it for him because he knows that death is coming. But I, I, as soon as I seen this, I thought, okay, Picard is dying. Picard's want wants a way to get, we want a way to get, Picard off the show, but not. And this is it. He's going to transfer, or Dr. Dr. Agnes is going to transfer his, his brain to this, and we get a whole new actor taken on with all of Picard's memories and everything. I, I truly think this is what we're going to see for season two. I may be wrong, but I know you mentioned it. I mentioned it to, to Will before you did too, Brad, and I love that you had the same thought I had because it makes me feel like you know we might be onto something there. Will, uh, you're against it, though. Explain again why you don't think this is going to happen. So I think that that fix-it thing that, I, I don't remember her name, that one synth gave to Rafi is not only just to fix the ship, because she said, how does it work? She says, use your imagination. She obviously loves Picard, Rafi does, and will do anything to save him. So she's going to use her imagination and try to fix uh, Picard as well. And I think that's going to solve that issue that Agnes Aggie is going to bring back the mind of uh, Maddox based on, because I, I bet he's uploaded some way. I was just going to say from where, but if you think he's been backed up somewhere. Right. I think that's already, because that's what Maddox was best at. And I think that's the whole point, but they actually have like a, I think he's been backed up in some sort of framework. Could it be data? Like backed yeah. up in data? Cause he backed up his memories in the computer. Right. But then it failed or something, but maybe somehow they saved it well no i th well i don't know i think that maddox backed up his own mind in a computer like you remember that one uh the that one episode i think it was in season three where but car or not Picard, but data data's uh, uh, grandpa you guys remember that one right where that guy uploaded his memories into data but it didn't Right. But I, I think that Maddox uploaded his thought and his mind into into that. And I think uh, Agnes is going to bring his mind into that, that golem. What, what, would, what good would that do, though? Where would that take us, I guess? It, this is for Agnes. It doesn't not necessarily have nothing to do with for the show. I, 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 I honestly think I think that it's it's it, it's trying to. The point of this golem is also to kind of think that that's what's going to happen with Picard. I think this is the throw you off the trail of what is actually really going to happen. And this is going to be the, the surprise. You're thinking, oh, I know what's going to happen. And they're like, oh, I didn't see that coming. I think that's exactly what's going to happen here. You guys are just following sheep and uh, you're going to be wrong. Well, I'd mentioned earlier, I thought that tool might be to use to re repair Picard. However, I, I, I could see that happening, but... I think Picard needs to get off the show, so I, I I'm going to go with the Golem as my main thought. And I, and when you mentioned the computer thing with Maddox, it made me think of Data. I I would bet more that it's going to be Data getting transferred into that instead of Picard, but or I mean instead of uh, Maddox. But my number one is still Picard. So, but we'll see. We got we got one do week you, to find out. Do you think uh, that Data is going to actually go into the Golem, and then Data is going to have to be the one that convinces the sense to say, "Hey, this isn't the right thing to do." And then that's actually going to be what saves every the day. I know. I, I think I think that story is plausible there, but I don't think it's data. I think it's Picard. 
I so, think Picard as a synth is what saves the day. If you're listening to this podcast right now, I need to know that you agree with me. So leave that comment in the in the description below or in the comment section. That's crazy will just to say you believe crazy will theory. I need a crazy will plus one. <laughs> All right. So moving on from there, we get we get Sutra talking to Kama. What is it? Her first name's Kama. Kama. Sutra. Oh. Uh, I struggle enough with uh, words, Will. Don't confuse me more. <laughs> uh, all right. So next up, we get Sutra talking to um, Soji. And she basically has told her her plan. And it sounds to me at this point like she's ready to just basically make the beacon and call the uh, android overlords in to basically save them and destroy all humanity. And Soji is, is against it at this point. Um, and they're arguing about it, and then we see Narek being captured and brought into the city. Kind of ends the conversation right there. We get a short scene next, uh, Rakana giving Raffi that sonic screwdriver we were talking about. And, you know, Raffi asks, well, what's this for? And she says, it fixes things mysteriously. I, I love like, that you called that a sonic screwdriver. Well, right, what else would you call it? And and so this is where me and Will were both talking earlier. We think it possibly could f- fix Picard. I thought maybe it's going to fix the board cube, maybe bring Hugh back to life. What's this thing going to do? Give me some more speculation, guys. I don't think this is going to bring back organic life. This is for mechanical and and compute only. I think it's going to be what saves the um, XBs. I mean, they're already saved. What else? What, I mean, what else would it do for them? I don't know. We don't know what it does. We don't even know how it works. We got to use our imaginations. Didn't you hear? Well, we did. We think it's going to save Picard, possibly. I think it's going to fix the board cube, possibly. I don't know what else it would do, though, I guess. But it's it just the way they played it out was mysterious. Otherwise, it would just be like, oh, yeah, this repairs machines. Let's use it on your ship. And they didn't do that. So something that's going to come in very useful. What it's so, going to do. What makes you think it repairs only machines and not organic? I'm just saying. I don't know. Just that seem, it would be it be way too OP if it was a, a, a repair organic. I don't know. It, it seems that to me seems way implausible. Well, I mean, they have stuff that does it already, though. No, well, they have dermal regenerators, but they don't have something that's going to go in and fix Picard's mind or, you know, raise the dead. I think those are that's that's way too OP. I agree. The few things really stretching it. That was kind of just of a you know way out there but i do think it could easily fix picard mm. see you, i already got you on my plus one eric no well, i'm still going with the the golem first but this this is very plausible if they're gonna keep picard on the show for season two i mean that's how you do it all right so we get that scene quickly followed by the one with Narek trying to persuade his guard rakana uh, it's rakana's twin i believe actually um i didn't catch her name um to let him out because he wants some water and she almost does it. And then Soji comes in just in time and says, you know, don't, don't trust this guy. They have a, a nice little conversation where basically just Narek tries to say, I'm sorry, I love you. And Soji's not having any of it. And uh, they end it there, but we get a scene a little bit later with Sutra letting Narek free saying, because she still needs his services. Uh, in the process, someone kills uh, Saga was her name. Saga is Rakana's twin. Someone kills Saga with that bird to the eye, which is OK. So you guys are going to have to explain this to me or, or maybe nobody really knows. First off, why did it kill her? Second off, why was Alton talking so much about oh, your yellow eye, your precious yellow eye is ruined? Did that make any sense to you guys? I think. Yeah, that, OK, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Brad. Do you want to rock, paper, scissors? This go first. Uh, rock, paper, scissors, box. Yeah. Okay. Ready. One, two, three. Rock. Spot. I win. So, um, I so I got a bunch of things with this. First of all, I think Narek's purpose here was to escape. That's it. Period. So she let him out, and then blamed him for the death of Golden Eye Girl. Um, and and because of that, she was able to say, "Look what happens. Organics always ruin the day. Now we're." lost another person because the organics are here. Wow, we need to kill them all. 
And, and that was the mechanism to, to make all this happen, to convince all the rest of the sense to go against the organics. So, so that's thing one. And I think that she's the one that killed, um, you know, Goldeneye girl, um, because that was what was necessary to also get everybody activated like that. And third, I think that all of them that have the golden eyes, I think they're all like the, um, the master copy. Like they're the first copy. They're the ones that, that are closest in lineage to data. That's what I got. Oh man. I like that idea of the golden eye being the master copy. You might say golden master, but why, why do they both have golden eyes though? In the sets, wouldn't only one of them have a master copy? No, because they said earlier in the series that it, with this kind of uh, replication, that they always come out as twins. Okay, I go with that. Why didn't Soji or Dodge when neither of them had golden eyes? Well, because Jana and uh, uh, Power Flower or whatever her name was were the two that were the masters. Oh, you think Dodge and Soji weren't necessarily sisters? They were just the clones Not, or the, the duplicates of those two yeah i think they're i think they're later in the replication process like there may be newer revisions of the same copy oh. like it's running out of ink yeah i like that they ran out of gold ink is why eric man damn printers all right do you uh, you guys done with that one i'm gonna tell you why you're all wrong are you ready because the preview for next week shows Narek meeting up with Whoa, spoilers. Oh damn it. All right, we'll get we'll get to that at the end. All right, so next up we get uh we get Sutra again, and she is giving a speech to the crowd of other synths, uh basically saying we need to do this and we need to eliminate all uh organic life so we can survive. Uh we get a couple back and forth. Picard comes in, gives a speech, you know, for for organic life. Uh, Picard is winning, in my opinion. You know, everybody's looking on, and, and then we get Dr. Soon coming in and saying, nobody listened to Picard before, and blah, blah, blah. And Dr. Sutra, or Dr. Sutra, Sutra says, okay, lock up Picard and lock up Dr. Agnes. But uh, Dr. Agnes pleads her case. Dr. Soon takes her side, and I think Dr. Agnes is going to save the day at the end next episode. Uh, but she she acts like she's all for them. And they're going to go with this plan. I also think Soji, who sided with them, the, the sense are, is going to obviously, after all of Picard's knowledge that he's laid on her this episode about doing the right thing in death, I think he's, he's, she's definitely going to trade sides, probably help Dr. Agnes, and they're going to somehow save the day. But uh, what would you guys think about this scene? What were your guys' thoughts? What's going to happen? I thought one of the crucial things, I guess you kind of just overviewed, was when Picard was talking about, you know, doing the right thing or whatever. And they, he's going to stand up and be the, their voice. And he's going to tell the Federation, they must listen to him. And then that's when Dr. Soong basically says, well, they didn't listen to you before, you know, whether you're going to listen to you now. And I was like, Oh my gosh, it's like, that's just like cut to the throat. You know, you talk to some Brad. Yeah. I mean, I got some seedlings of thoughts, but nothing I can, I can start with right now. All right, let's talk about possibly my favorite scene in this whole episode. Only the only thing that might take its place was the board cube board cube dropping in. The scene of Commander O and that Warbird Armada coming. Holy crap, did that not look awesome? Twenty-four hours till landfall. Do you guys like the redesign of the Warbird and this her outfit? Man, that looked it looks so cool. Yeah. Did I miss something? Seriously? I must have missed that completely. Seriously, Brad, with the uh? Uh? That was freaking awesome. Yeah. Where did they build all those ships? They don't have a home planet. They don't even have a whole lot of... I mean, they're all displaced. Yeah. They looked okay. They they looked, I don't know, eh. 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 They're all going to be wreckage at the end of the next episode anyway. Probably you're probably right, but man, I thought it was great. I love that scene. I love the redesign of Warbird. I just thought it looked looked epic. 
Uh, so that was that was the ending scene of that whole episode. So let's talk about uh, our our final thoughts in this episode and what we think is going to happen in the finale next week. Oh boy, that's a big question. Um, what do I think is going to happen next week? I think that Narek is going to cross over and is going to attempt to be the good guy, try to win back Soji's heart by doing the good guy thing. Soji's going to get tickled by it and is going to uh, also flop sides from her synth counterparts. I think that Alton soon is going to bite the dust before getting uploaded into a, the, the, the golem. I think that Picard is going to get dropped into the golem. Him as the golem is going to save the day by convincing the other, you know, mighty Q like synth people that, you know, organics aren't all that bad. And I think that the Romulan Armada is going to get their butts handed to him by uh, the big bad uh, synth army. Um, and I believe that at the root of it all, Data's appreciation, respect, and love for Captain Picard is what's going to keep the synths from um, being jerks. So do you think Dr. Agnes is still working for Commander O? Or do you no. think she's legit good now? No, I'm not going to go that far. I still don't trust her, um, but I don't think that she's working for O anymore. I think I think she's probably way too like starstruck about where she's at to... And, and she feels a lot of remorse for what she did to to Maddox to still be on O's side. All right. So I think you're pretty close in in everything except for everything. I think <laughs> I think you have some some good ideas, but what I I I think the whole Golem thing again. I really think that's going to be Maddox or Data, and I think that Card's going to get healed by the Sonic Screwdriver. And I think that the Borg Cube is actually going to be the thing that comes and saves the day and destroys the Romulan fleet. Because I think that not only is the Borg Cube going to be coming in to help, but also all of Seven of Nine's riders, whatever they called, space riders or whatever. I I believe it's the riders of Rohan. Yeah, that's it. What were they called? Seriously. Rough Riders roll out. Was it something like the Fenris Riders or something like that? Ah, oh, that's it. Fenris Rangers. Yes, Fenris the Fenris Rangers. Rangers. Right. I couldn't find it on Google. That was straight up from the gray matter. <laughs> so I think that she's going to call in the Fenris Rangers or already has, and they're going to also come in because they're no fans of the Romulans either. So I think they're going to come in and actually also uh, do their thing and become a savior for the for the human race or whatever the organics if you will um i think that agnes is going to sacrifice herself in some way for picard um and i think that Narek is going to escape um at the end of the show and be one of the main villains for season two i don't think soji's going to actually kill him she may maim him a little bit but i think that uh elnor is going to uh, probably just stay on the board cube. I don't think he's really going to serve too much of a purpose in this next episode, but that's pretty much what I've got. Kimmy, you just joined us. I know you're getting in here late here, but what were your thoughts on this episode? What do you think is going to happen in the finale? Uh, this has been my favorite episode so far. Um, definitely the best one in my opinion. And uh, I, I think what we're going to see in the next episode in the finale is going to be, the Romulans are obviously going to arrive. There's going to be a big, giant, huge fight uh, between the synthetics and the uh, the Romulans. If I had to guess, I'm going to guess that the the Borg, Picard, and the Romulans are going to end up being almost on the same side to a point uh, where the synthetics are going to try to kill kill off the Federation, Earth. I think they're actually going to attack the humans and uh, 
I think we're actually going to see some uh, some changes of sides, but I think Picard is going to convince the Romulans not to destroy the synthetics. You think but the Federation is going to come in? Yeah, I think they are going to come in. Probably okay. not in full power, though. Like, it's not going to be like Wolf 359. Three, we're going to have Worf as captain and, and Captain LaForge come in as well. R- Riker, you stole my thunder, Will. That's where I was going to go with it. Because you seen Picard... Riker. You seem no, you seem Picard messaging, trying to get messages out. And I don't know if it was the distance, they're too far away, or if something was blocking it, but I think one of those messages are gonna get sent. And I think the Federation's on their way. We're gonna see Riker getting reactivated. He's they're gonna come in. Now, if you looked at the trailer for next week, you see a whole bunch of those uh orchid chips or giant plants. So I don't know if that's the planet's defenses that we don't know about, or if that's the the synth overlords that are coming in to to wipe out the master race. I'm not sure where they're going to go with that. I kind of think that they're going to get the board cube up and running. I think they're going to disable whatever the uh, communication tower they're trying to build. So they can't communicate with the overlords and we're, we're going to get a fight of the planet versus everybody basically. And I think the Federation is going to come in with Riker and at the helm of whatever ship he's on at the time. And I do, I do agree. I think, I think Picard's going to get in that golem. I think you're right. I think Dr. Agnes is going to save the day. And I like where Brad said that uh, Alton soon is going to die and Agnes is going to put Picard's brain into the golem. And that's how Picard's going to continue on with the show. And, a, you know, a new actor and with all the memories for season two. Do you think people would actually watch that if Patrick Stewart wasn't still Picard? I, I'm going to. Would you not? I would. I don't know. I'm just just thinking as far as like, man, this, this is a show is about Picard and yeah, it's the same quote unquote character, but it's not the same actor that we've all grown up and loved. He would still be Picard though. He would just be in this. I'm assuming this is the, the lead into potentially using the mind transfer to save Picard. Yes. Right. That's what we were thinking. It would still be Picard. It would be his consciousness. He would just be in a synthetic body. I think, I think that uh, this is all a precursor to the show Altered Carbon, and they're going to pr- cross <laughs> those two shows together. I mean, how epic would it be to get Q coming in and saving the day, or War for Riker, or somebody else at the end? You know, there's I'd lots love to of see, potential. I'd love Beverly to see Crusher Wheaton pick up uh, Wesley Crusher. He's with the yeah. time traveler, though, so I don't know where they would go with that. But maybe, I mean, who knows at this point? He could potentially be a, a captain. I mean, it's been twenty years. So do we have any thought of who these robot overlords are? It's because like, like I mentioned earlier, I think they're somehow linked with the Borg. I know you guys aren't really heavy into that theory. Uh, Kimmy, you missed that part, but I think that's how kind of Seven of Nine knew to go there. Do, do we think these, these are anybody we've seen? Is this a completely new, new race? Are they somehow related to the Borg, maybe? If they are related to the Borg, it would have to be some faction that broke off from the hive mind. Because the Borg's all about assimilating. Could it be control? Section nah. 31. Dang it, it could be control. I don't want it to be, but it could be. I agree. I don't want it to be control either. I, I really want Discovery and Picard to stay separate as much as possible. See, I have no problem but with it being control. It's entirely possible. I, I don't think it's control. Because control is, I mean, granted, yes, it's going to be several hundred years old at this point. And it could have definitely evolved. It's had more than enough time to evolve past just being an AI. And it definitely is the definition of synthetic life. I'd like, <laughs> I'd like it is to be a brand new race that we've never seen before. I'm hoping that it is. Do you think we'll actually see them? Or do you think the communication will get blocked and we won't? Or something will happen. They'll kill soon and Sutra before they get the signal out or something. Or do you think, think they will actually show up? I think they're going to bring them into the show. They, they've done too much lead into it to just not bring them in. I don't know. This seems like it'd be a pretty big plot to have to figure out a way to defeat them. Like I, I, I really like Brad, your idea of Picard being the one that unites everybody. He gets in the golem and then he unites, you know, the, the sense and the humans together. That just, that makes a lot of sense to me. I kind of think that might be how it goes down. Like we get a big Epic fight between the, the people on the planet who mysteriously must have a bunch of extra defenses they didn't tell Picard about um, from the, at least from the next show preview, it looked like. 
And I think it may be going bad, and then Picard saves the day in the Golem, and then the Golem guys, where we go from there. I definitely agree that it's going to be Picard that turns the tides, and I think it is going to be in a diplomatic fashion. But it, to me, it looks like they were constructing a weapon almost to akin to the uh, the First Order's planet killer weapon from Episode Seven. It looked like they were forming a big ray gun that was shooting up into the sky. Yeah, I assume that was the beacon or whatever they had to make to signal them. But uh, who knows? All right, everybody. Thanks for checking out our coverage of Star Trek Picard, Episode 9, Et and Arcadia Ego, Part 1. Make sure you hit that subscribe and follow button because we're going to be covering the finale next week. And we are going to see who was right and who was wrong. and what season two is going to bring. Thanks for listening. Have yourself a great night.